Denny Blanco, brand new episode of It's in the Game podcast here live Tuesday, May 21st, 2024. And without further ado, I'm joined by the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, the goat, Ariel Hewani. Ariel, my man, how you doing? Uh, guys, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, we've been talking about this for a while, and I'm excited to be here. I wish we were here to preview game one of the Eastern Conference Finals featuring our New York Knicks, but uh, this feels like a, a little therapy session as well. So it's uh, it's good to be here well, with you guys. I'm glad you're here, man. And uh, anybody who's chiming in live on Twitter, uh, on YouTube, any questions, comments, feedback while Ariel is on the show, put in the chat. Let us know. You can find Ariel on social media at Ariel Hawani. Denny Blanco with Sir Denny Blanco on Twitter, IG, and TikTok. Uh, myself, Randy J. Cruz, R-E-N-D-Y, little J-C-R-U-Z, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Ariel, you mentioned this is a, a therapy session. Me and you are longtime Knicks fans. We should have been in the conference finals today, but um, the injury bug finally caught up to us. Game seven, Brunson broke his hand, um, and it was just too much to overcome what I thought was an amazing season. I know most, you know, don't like. Ah, oh, come on, man. What is <laughs> this? It was, bro. We- <laughs> what is this, man? Too soon, man. Uh, Too soon. But listen, I, I, I look forward to the bounce back. I look forward to there's a lot of positivity to go around. Um, I'm proud of this team. I'm pretty sure you are, too. But your overall take on the season, getting to a game seven at your home building in the conference semis. And the mega question. Do you run it back or do you tweak a little things here and there? Okay. Well, first of all, um, so thankful, so grateful for this season. What a fun ride it has been, really. Mm -hmm. Um, And what a likable team. You know, long-suffering Knicks fans, we've had to to take a lot of punches. Um, We've been, you know, the punchline to a lot of jokes, the LOL Knicks, all that stuff. And there's nothing you can say. And, 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 Obviously, there are people in the media who continue to try to, you know, you see it on this uh, on this Tuesday, on the Monday after. Like, it, it, it's just easy to go after Knicks fans and the Knicks, but the organization doesn't deserve that. The players certainly don't deserve that. Tibbs doesn't deserve it. It, it. it was a magical run. I see a lot of people saying, like, best season since 99. Like, hold up. Let's not disrespect 2012, 2013. That was a great run mm-hmm. with Mello. Like, let's not just like lump it all in. Right. Um, the post pandemic season, the We Here Julius Randle season, the one that went up against Atlanta, that was a great time in a very depressing time, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Uh, New York was empty and that team gave us a nice little run. Last season's team was fun as well. But I would say it's. Um, one of my favorite Knicks teams of all time because of the heart, because of the togetherness, because of the um, the resolve, the grit, you know, not settling for uh, the third seed or the fourth seed or trying to avoid this or that. Like these freaking guys went for it. Mm. And as you said, they ran out of steam. They ran out of body parts. The, the health just couldn't hold up. But I, I am so proud to be a Knicks fan. I'm so proud to be a fan of these guys. And – in particular, I, I first became a Knicks fan in 1990. I fell in love with the 90s Knicks. Patrick Ewing is my favorite athlete of all time. And I will always forever hold that that team, that decade in my heart. But it's different being 12, 13, 14, as opposed to being a 41-year-old dad mm-hmm. with a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old. And I even get a little emotional talking about this because to see my kids now find their Ewing and Starks and Oakley in the form of Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo. I will say this from the heart. I am so happy that my kids have those guys to look up to. I am so happy that the, that, that my kids can now say, those are my guys. That my kid, um, my, my second born, wore his Brunson jersey to school yesterday proud after they got eliminated. Like, yeah, we're out. Because that's what I would do when they would get eliminated back mm. in the day. I would wear my Ewing jersey proud and be like, I'm a Nick fan. We'll be back. So it's a great time. Obviously, I wish we were playing tonight against the Celtics. I believe if we were healthy, we would give them a run. I, w- I believe if we were healthy with Julius, we'd give the Mavs or the Timberwolves a run. Mm-hmm. And uh, I put this up there with 97 as far as one of the great what-if years in recent New York Knicks history, if you want to call 97 recent at this point. Um, I really do think that they had what it took, but it's all right. The future is bright. 
I don't know if the future was as bright in 2013 when Roy Hibbert blocked Carmelo Anthony at the rim. Oh, boy. It was as bright in 2021 or even 2022 or 2023. 22, they didn't make the playoffs, but 23, they did. So I, I, I really do feel like we have a lot to be proud of. And I honestly can't wait to see how this offseason unfolds. To your last question, like, do they run it back? Yeah, for the most part, I would like to see them run it back. Obviously, I want OG back. I want iHeart back. But uh, there are some there are some moves to be made. There's some capital that can be used. There are some great decisions that can be made. And I believe in this front office for the first time in a very long time. And I just can't wait to see what they do. Uh, before Denny chimes in, I think it's very important because I did see this on Twitter like an hour ago. Yeah. Um, damn, where are you? Where are you? It was something where Steve Popper of Newsday said yeah. that uh, Brunson is looking – the word is Brunson might be signing a contract extension – Hell yeah. Probably d- this year, but getting. Less, I think it was 156. Less, yeah, 156, but do it now as opposed to waiting for two years down the road to get 256. So he's taking, he wants the more, f- four more years. He wants the, 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 the longevity, but I think he's taking less money, obviously, to, for the team to make certain moves. So that kind of shows you like he's, like he's in it. He's he's not here just just for the money. He's he he wants to win here in New York. Did we need this though to to confirm that? Like no 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 no. no. That dude is in it, man. Yeah. That, I've looked at the clip of him leaving his car on Sunday and high fiving all those fans. Mm. Like who does that, man? L- l- let me tell the audience a quick story. Um, I, you know, obviously I adore the Knicks and I I want to take my kids to a game, but because of my travel, my work, and all that stuff, it's it's hard to find a day. Mm. And on a Friday around a month and a half or so ago, it all worked out where I was like, oh, we could go to this afternoon game against the Nets tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I just bought tickets off StubHub. And then you reached out to me, Randy, about coming on this podcast. And you had mentioned that, and I don't, is this, am I allowed to talk about this? Is that okay? You're good. You're good. Go okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and you had mentioned that like you do, so, I don't, I didn't want to, you know, blow your spot, uh, <laughs> that you do some stuff at MSG. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, we're, we're just so happy to be going. And you were incredibly gracious and kind to get us into shoot around and to get my kids up. Like I, I am, I'm forever grateful for that experience. And they got to be there just like I was as a kid getting autographs, mm-hmm. trying to meet my favorite players. And I love these guys going into that experience. And again, thank you so much for that. I really, really Anytime, do appreciate bro. it. Anytime. It meant a lot. I loved them going in. I adored them going out of that. Mm-hmm. Every single one of them stopped from Deuce to iHeart to Jalen to uh, to Julius. Every single one of them stopped. And it wasn't just like, you know, I, I, I used to go to, Montreal Expos games early growing up in Montreal and I would try to get autographs and some guys were nice some guys were total a-holes and some guys would just like give a scribble like these dudes not only did they stop I and I lo- I've looked at this clip and I showed it to my kids and I wanted them to appreciate it when I said thank you to Jalen he said of course like of course like of course I would do this superstars don't usually act that way you know there's a few there's some guy like this dude is salt of the earth and again I, 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 I'm just so proud that he is the face of this team and I believe in him, man. And I, re- I saw that clip of him and Josh leaving the, um, their car on Sunday afternoon and all the fans waiting out them outside for them. And, and shout out to those fans for sticking through because I know that wasn't immediately after the game. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I cannot wait for these guys to go down Broadway because they will get it. I believe it in my heart. They are winners. They won in college. They'll win in the NBA. And I can't wait for that day. Danny Blanco, take it away. Whoo! All right, before I get to my question, Ariel Helwani. Um, yes. Are you a Knicks hater? Are you one of those? <laughs> no, no, no. Let's take our time. Let's take our time. Let's take our time now. We got, okay. we got some time now. I just want to make sure everyone knows this is a big deal. We get guests on. I want to give you your flowers. Howard mm. Costello of MMA, the guy who took a chance on himself, who always bets on himself. Mm. I'm, I'm cutting a promo. Allow me to just, just give you some- I, I, hey, yeah. I love a good promo. Yeah, allow me to, yeah, allow me to give you your flowers. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I read your story, and I think your story is brilliant, and it's an inspiration to a lot of us where it's um, you see a path um, not taken by many folks and you decide to take it upon yourself to take that path. And I was just telling Randy before you got on, I said, yeah, usually the person that goes over that hill the first time, it's going to get some arrows <laughs> and he's going to come back and he's going to shake mm-hmm. them off and say, you know what? I'm going over that hill again. <laughs> yeah. So I want to applaud you 
for being, you. you know, obviously the MMM, MMA voice uh, for a period of time. Journalist of the year, obviously, you get win that award often, early and often, and, and, and we appreciate you being here. Having stated Thank that, you. no, I'm not a Knicks hater. Okay. However, you do have Knicks fans who are um, con- not content with this season. And I've, I've saw, I was speaking with, uh, shout out to a CP, and I saw his timeline. And a lot of folks are trying to um, say, you know, we need another star added to this particular Knicks team. And I don't know if that's the answer because you mentioned uh, culture. You see, you mentioned yeah. these players and how they move and how they've established a specific culture. So I pass it off to you, Ariel. What do you think about a possible hypothetical Kevin Durant for Julius Randle trade straight up, which was dropped online today. What say you? Listen, I, I love our guys and I really do love Julius because I think Julius was the guy who, look, when he signed with the Knicks, he didn't have a ton of options, right? I think going to the Knicks was the best thing. Look at who he was and where he was at in his career before coming to the Knicks and look at the reaction to that signing. No one thought like this would be some big deal. And I will be the first to say that I've had at times like a love-hate relationship with him um, in that he takes a bunch of shots where you're like, oh, come on, man. And and sometimes it seems like he's a little bit selfish and he's not the leader that you want. But the truth is we don't need him to be that leader anymore because we have Jalen and other people who have emerged, Josh as well, um, since he was the man a few years ago. Look at how they played in January. Look at that month after the OG trade. Mm-hmm. And I just want more of that. And so if you ask me, do you want to run it back with the same guys? I say, hell yeah. I want to see more of that. Injuries come into play and there's some concern here and there about, you know, can they hold up all that stuff? But I want to see, I'm down for more than more of that, but also I'm down for the franchise and for the front office to look for ways to improve. They have never sat idly by. If you would have asked me in December, like you want to trade RJ? I'm Canadian. So I always had a very soft spot in my heart for RJ. I would have said, no, 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 hold on to him. Like you were going to, you were get, you were offered Donovan Mitchell for him, and you you kept him. So like, hold mm-hmm. on to him. But golly, man, we don't make it this far. We don't have this same kind of second half if they don't make that trade, right? I think everyone agrees. Precious was gigantic, and uh, and obviously OG was gigantic when he played. So I want to see what they do. KD for for Julius. I don't hate it, but I'm not banging the drum. Like, I'm a very loyal guy, and and you won't see me. I'm not one of these fans like get him out of town. Get it like mm-hmm. I'm riding with my guys. And and if there's a trade, I see it pop up on the timeline and there's a new guy, I'm riding with you now. And so like I free I'll tell you the truth like I hate TJ McConnell. <laughs> God, I hate that guy. I hate him with every freaking fiber in my being right now. But I'll be straight up honest with you, mm-hmm. if it pops up that the Knicks acquire TJ, I'm like, "All right, welcome to the family. Mm-hmm. You're my guy and I will freaking root you on." So I don't know if now, maybe talk to me in July and be like, you want to move on from Julius? Maybe I see something different. But now I'm in the mode of just being thankful and grateful for these guys. And I know that's all kind of, you know, rainbows and lollipops. But I re- what Nick fan out there didn't miss Julius in April and May? God, I wish we had him. I wish we had him. Hmm. I wish we had him against Siakam. I wish we had him mm-hmm. freaking muscling in there against Indiana. We would have beaten those guys. And I don't care what anyone says. They are not as good as the Knicks. They are not. But... That's the game, you know, injuries come into play and they, they did what they had to do. I mean, yeah, I, I agree because, you know, we had um, Sean Geddes on yesterday. Uh, does a great job for Nick Swall. And a lot of points were made about, you know, Brunson, Randall, Tibbs. And I'm like, Ariel, it, it feels good that it's the month of May. And as a Nick fan, we don't got to worry about, oh, where are we picking in the draft? What are we going to do yeah. the draft? Free agency. Like, is, that's been the norm, right? But still, the norm is, all right, who is the star that we can get? So now Donovan was on, on, on the table two years ago. We didn't get him. Now, from Sunday to now, it's been like, all right, Mikhail Bridges, um, Kevin Durant, Paul George, Devin Booker. Do you run it back with Donovan? And I'm like, every person you're trying to get links to Randall. And I'm like, Randall gave you 25, 25 10, and 5 that you desperately missed in the playoffs you could have beaten Philly in a shorter period of time. Every game was down to the wire. It was just like we we can't we can't keep this up every every game. Then Indiana, no. boom, every game tight. 
the last four were blowouts, but that first three games were just like down to the wire, last possession, and he, and he got six, seven guys. Like this, at some point in time, it's going to take its toll. But missing Randall, the OG, Mitchell Robinson, you missing, you miss four starters. Oh, yeah. Like what team in the NBA could miss four starters and get one game away from the conference finals? I don't think any team right now can do that. No, and not only that, a key guy off the bench. Jalen obviously wasn't 100%. Mm-hmm. I don't think iHeart was was good towards the end of that series as well. I mean, like, and then obviously what happened with Josh in uh, in Game Six, like they were the walking wounded. It was a, it was it was yeah. wild to see. And uh, at one point, I was just looking at the roster after the Detroit trade. I was like, holy crap! Like we're legit nine ten deep if healthy when we thought Julius would come back. And so that's what made it so exciting. But like January was great. And uh, and I really do think that if these guys come back now, there are some big questions, right? Does OG come back? You'd think so. Yeah. Does iHeart come back? Mm. He gets more money elsewhere. God, I love that guy. I adore that guy. Uh, I would do anything to keep him. Um, and I love the the, the two headed monster. And 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 honestly, I think you can make a very strong case that he should start over Mitch if if they're both available and healthy because of what he gives you on the offensive end and his passing as well, mm. right? So. I would love to keep them all. And uh, I love that quote from Josh Hart as they were, as they were wrapping up the media availability on uh, Sunday, where he's like, those two guys better come back. And, mm-hmm. and I think all Knicks fans would agree with that sentiment. Yep. Danny Blanco. As an MMA guy. Whoo, Randy. <laughs> yeah. Randy, uh, Ar- Ariel spitting some balls today, boy. Wait, wait a minute now. You know, I'm thinking, well, he, you know, he's the MMA guy. He's going to come in. He's going to Nah, I'm much more than that. Did he see multi-talented? Excuse Hell me. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> I, I stand corrected. Listen, I don't know if we want to, you know, we still want to talk about the Knicks, Randy, or you want to get to, uh, you know, Mike Tyson yeah, and this. I, this I, I, well, I, can I just say one thing? I want to ask you guys. You're wearing a cool shirt there. Thank you. Come, come on. Halliburton with that sweatshirt. That's whack. That's whack. Well, I'm sorry. So just to let me know what happened with the Halliburton sweatshirt. I don't know. Halliburton showed up at the post game press conference um, on on Sunday, Game Seven, with the Reggie Choke sweatshirt. Now, totally okay with it. Wear that sweatshirt walking in. Mm-hmm. Wear that sweatshirt walking uh-huh. in. Uh huh. They wore it when they won, but he didn't yeah. get it coming in. That's whack. That's whack. <laughs> Wear that sweatshirt when you walk into the garden. Say, this is what I'm going to do to you guys. You were up 2 nothing. You were up 3-2. You're about to choke. You wear it after the fact. I think that's whack. I think that's whack. And uh, Called him I like Halliburton. I like Halliburton. I like he's a pro wrestling guy. Yeah. His Twitter feed is fun. He seems like a good guy. I'm not one of these people who doesn't think he's an all-star. He doesn't deserve to be on the USA team. Blah, 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 blah. The, the, some of the antics in this particular series were annoying when they're up and he disappeared and he had nothing to say when they were down. The sweatshirt annoyed me. W- wear that mm-hmm. on the way in, not just on the I, way out. I think Ariel's basically being, I think Ariel's basically saying, if you're going to be that guy, <laughs> be that guy. If you're going to be that guy, look at Aunt Edwards. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to be that guy, yeah. Be that guy. You, you agree. Be- you agree. Wear that sweatshirt walking in. Mm-hmm. Call your shot. So then, my question is, on that based on that point, every time the Knicks won, they go outside the guard and they say "F Trey Young." Now they were saying "F Joel Embiid." Yeah, just to, you know. But now, do you think who's the who is the Knicks villain right now? Is 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 it is it now Tyrese because they he won in Game Seven? Is it Embiid? He's, I mean, he's up there. I you know, it's whatever. Can I just say like the videos are fine, but I don't. I'm not down with the like. Yeah. celebrating like we just won the championship after game one i'm not <laughs> i know it's a lot of young kids who haven't seen a lot of success i get it but like could you imagine in the 90s with ewing and oakley and starks if people were doing that after a game one win in the first round like come on guys we're 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 new york we're the knicks fans like let's let's chill a little bit because that's what makes us into the punching bag and i get it's it's good to be happy like let's fucking go like that mm-hmm. scene that scene after Game four in Philly, the fans who traveled, mm-hmm. you know, and they were leaving yeah. Wells Fargo and all that. That was cool as hell. But like you can watch some of those clips and you would think that, wow, the Knicks, did the Knicks just win the championship? What's going on? So people give me crap about that. I'm like, I wouldn't be that guy. Like I, I'm psyched. I'm happy. I'm emotional. I'm celebrating. But I think we need to chill on some of that stuff after one game or the first game of opening night and all that stuff. So anyway, uh, Halliburton's up there. He's going to hear it mm-hmm. and let's go. I welcome it. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take our chances against 
the Pacers next year if we're both healthy? No problem. If you're just tune, uh, tuning in, we're live with um, Aria Hawani live here on Twitter and YouTube. Any questions, comments, feedback, let us know. Hit us up in the chat. Uh, but t- before Danny goes, I, I do agree with – I think it, it, it is fun. I, 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 I would have loved to see and imagine – because it's going to happen one day, Ariel. It, it will happen when the Knicks win a championship and that 7th Avenue gets shut down. Ain't nobody going to school. Ain't nobody going to work. They're calling out. It's going to be mayhem. It's like, I Damn. get it after game one, game two. and it just. But it also shows how emotional we are, how raw we are. Like, they've been yearning for this for quite some time. We haven't been this close. I know last year was close, game six. But we're, I, they feel we're just... One step, one, one step away. I mean, it kind of feel like 90s, right? You, you're one game away, one series away, and it never happened. But I think I feel like now in a tight knit Eastern Conference with Boston, Philly, Milwaukee, the Knicks are right there. So it's, it's only a matter of time. I think so. I mean, I look at the landscape. I look at who's out there. I look at who's... Uh who's going to get healthy next year. And I like our chances against all these teams. Mm-hmm. What, what hurts about this particular playoff run is that it felt like the chips were falling in our favor. Like Milwaukee was banged up. Mm-hmm. There was no beast really in the East. I thought, no you know, Porzingis. Austin, no Porzingis. I love KP. I will always love KP. Um, I know some Knicks fans hate him, but I, I, I have love for him. And, uh, you know, there's, there's Philly who we bounced. India wasn't worried about like so. I just felt like there was a path there. I didn't. I, I don't think we were gonna like stroll right into the finals. Yeah, but there was a path for at least a conference finals berth. And of course, we hadn't been there since two thousand. So, mm-hmm. you know. But again, it's not a Cinderella run. It feels like the beginning of something. Yes. I just got. I just got kicked in the nuts twice this year because I'm a long suffering. My my two favorite teams are the Knicks and the Bills, the Buffalo Bills, mm-hmm. and there were so many similarities. I mean. I just won one. I just won one. And and there they are, second round, Knicks bounced by Pacers, second round and at home, mm. and second round, Chiefs bounce the Bills at home. There were so many similarities between the two seasons. I do feel like unfortunately the uh the the the, the Bills window mm-hmm. will uh is closing a little bit quicker and the the Knicks window is opening up. So I feel better about the Knicks' future than the Bills at this precise moment. So Alex said, yeah, your kids will go to school with the Knicks win a championship. <laughs> oh, man. I, I mean, I told my kids that I would run outside naked if they won the championship. Uh-oh. Like, all Uh-oh. hands on deck. I don't care, man. I just want one. June? I, I'm not- June? What's the date? June? Yeah, whatever it is. It's 15, 16, 17. Whatever it is, I will. I don't know what I would do. I, 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 I've thought about it. I don't know what I would do. And I'm not. I don't want a dynasty. I don't mm-hmm. care. I don't care if they go 0 and 82. I just want to know what that feels like. What does it feel like to buy the shirt, mm-hmm. to buy the hat, to sit there and see your guys holding the trophy, to watch the post game, to watch the parade? What does that feel like? I don't know. I've never mm-hmm. experienced that with any of my teams. Uh, I'm just dying to find out. But since you said Nixon Bills, real quick, Denny, um, if Buffalo is in the Super Bowl. And the Knicks are like in the Game Seven NBA Finals. Which one are you going to? Ah, you can't. I, I, mean, I got you. Like, I gotta ask. I gotta ask. You can't. You know, yes, he can. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he can. Which it's one a tough one. Outweighs the, the most. Are, are you? You want a Knicks championship before a Buffalo championship, or like how does it? How does it work for you? It's so tough. Um, th- there's several feelings because. Mm-hmm. If I truly had to rank them, like I like basketball more than football. If I truly had to rank them, and so the and then I've been a Knicks fan a little bit longer than I was a Bills fan, just by like a year. Mm-hmm. the The difference is, I almost want the Bills to win so badly, not for myself, but for that community, for Western New York, for Buffalo. Buffalo as a city has never seen a championship of any kind, any of their sports teams, Sabers, etc. New York, as you know, has seen championships. And so those people are incredible human beings. Um, and so there's a part of me that just like would love to see that city win it. I have no ties to that city. I just have fallen in love with the team and and everything around the team. Um, but if I had like gun to my head, if I had to pick which one would make me more emotional, I really don't know. Maybe the Knicks <laughs> by like 1%, like that little, but like... I'd rather not choose if I'm being honest. Look, Can I just see, have both? 
Can I just have both? There you go, Randy. Give them both. Good. Yeah, good. you got it. You got it. Um, I fear that I peaked as a sports fan in the 90s because obviously the Bills made it to four Super Bowls. The Knicks were in the finals in 94, mm-hmm. and I've never gotten anywhere near that. I was a huge Montreal Expos baseball fan. They don't exist anymore. They were the best team in baseball in 94. Like That's my fear. I fear that the 90s were my peak, and I'll never get back to that. Denny, mm. go ahead. Oh, goodness. I mean... We could continue with the NBA. I mean, we have so many other ways, places we could go. Whatever uh, route you go to, whatever route you want to go to. I mean, this this Mike Tyson, Jake Paul, um, cor- uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? A fight exhibition, uh, dance. Nah, it's a fight. It's a fight. It's a fight. Well, listen, I'm. It's perfect that you're here. I'm on the outside looking in. So, as a guy who's looking at this knowing that Mike Tyson's one of the greatest boxers that's ever lived, seeing that uh, Jake Paul has been in some uh, fights recently, and whether some believe real or not, some people believe it's a good competition or not. My question to you is, yeah, first question is, you know, is it a real fight for those that pretty much may not know that? And secondly is, you know, is this fight going to be actually serious to the point where, you know, Mike's trying to look for a knockout? A hundred percent, in my opinion. Does he get the knockout? I don't know. But it, it is it is being sanctioned by the Texas Athletic Commission, Ooh. meaning, you know, the the, the, the government that oversees uh, combat sports. So in case you don't know, like if I want to put on an event in the state of New York or in the state of California, Nevada, Texas, Florida, like the, there, there are government officials that oversee this. And so Texas has, after doing all kinds of medical stuff on Mike and all that, they've deemed it a professional fight it can go forward despite the age gap there'll be a 30 year age gap between them and i i understand the trepidation from people who who hear that they have changed the rules slightly <clears throat> there will be a winner there there's there's knockdowns allowed there's knockouts allow, allowed all that stuff the only modification is as opposed to 3 minute rounds it's 2 minute rounds and it's 14 ounce gloves so the padding is obviously a little bit bigger it's the 12 so, rounds uh no eight. eight eight yeah so um twelve is usually title fight ten would be like high level non title fight so this is just a little bit of a smidge below that and so it's wild to me I mean we all know who Mike Tyson everyone knows who he is I can't tell you guys how many people have come up to me and said either like I'm walking my dog or. Uh, just yesterday, I was in a parking garage and stuff, and people are like, who's going to win the fight? And I always know what they're referring to, but because I cover a lot of different fighting, not just MMA, boxing, et cetera, I, I, want, it, I want them to say, I'm like, which fight are you talking about? There's a lot of big fights coming up. Conor McGregor is coming back in June. There's a ton of big fights. There's a huge pay-per-view in Newark on June 1st, et cetera. And it's always Tyson Paul. That's what everyone wants to talk about. Um, parents in my kids' class who know nothing about fighting all have asked me about this for several reasons. Number one, it's Mike Tyson. Everyone of our sort of generation knows who he is. Number two, Jake Paul has really crossed over, especially with the younger demographic. And number three, it's it's on Netflix. Like there's no pay-per-view required. If you're a Netflix subscriber, you will get this card. And um, this is the first time that Netflix airs live combat sports. They did a deal with WWE, as you know, that starts in 2025. Five, excuse me, but this will be the first card that they air live. And so that's going to be huge. There's 270 million Netflix subscribers around the world. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's just like, I have an account, but it's in a family of five, right? Like, so think about how many people could watch this. And what's cool about it is not only is there no pay-per-view, it's, um, you know, like the 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 provider who airs, like Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk this past weekend, the Undisputed Heavyweight title fight, like that aired on DAZN, on TNT, on this platform, in this country, this is all uniform. There is only one place that is airing this, and that's Netflix around the world. Like if you're in Brazil, if you're in Japan, if you're in Saudi Arabia, if you're in America, Canada, Australia, it's all the same place. And that's pretty damn cool as far as like a connective tissue. Mm -hmm. So yeah, oh, and oh, by the way, it's going to be at AT AT&T Stadium where the Cowboys play. So they're expecting an insane, and as of right now, here we are, uh, a little less than two months away, you say that it is as of right now the highest grossing combat sports event in the history of Texas. So that includes Canelo at AT&T Stadium and Manny Pacquiao and UFC highest grossing. 
between a 58 year old, soon to be 58 year old Mike Tyson mm-hmm. and a former Disney slash YouTube kid named Jake Paul. It's kind of wild. Do they want to see Jake Paul get knocked out or do they want to see Mike Tyson fall? Interesting. Yeah. Well, I think it depends on who you ask. I think most people who are my age will say, Mike can't go out like this. Like <laughs> people who grew up watching Mike in the nineties and eighties and playing punch out and all that stuff. There's like, there is no freaking way we can stomach seeing uncle Mike at this point, you know, face first on the canvas, like how Jake Paul left Tyron Woodley a couple of years mm-hmm. ago. And then I think there's kids who are, you know, in their teens, early twenties who are like, Jake Paul's going to kill him. They think Jake Paul is better than Canelo Alvarez. They, this is all they know about mm-hmm. boxing. So uh, I think it just depends on the demographic. Yeah. Because listen, if I'm watching and I see Mike Tyson lose this fight, anybody on social media gonna be like, "Oh, Mike, Mike, Mike got the bag. He did it for the for the love, but he got the bag to like take the L." And I'm like, Mike Tyson is not gonna go into this situation, say, "You know what? Give me the bag. I get knocked out. I lose in eight rounds, and I'll go home." He ain't he ain't doing that. He ain't doing that. no, no. That's not. I mean. First of all, like I, it kind of drives me nuts when people say this was fixed, this was rigged. Yeah, you could go to jail. Like if a promoter is caught fixing a fight here in America, th- that's a criminal offense. Mm. Especially now with all the gambling and all that stuff, like it ain't worth it. Mm. You know what I mean? It is not worth it. So people on social media, especially after these Jake fights, because they don't want to give him the credit because they don't like him because they can't fathom that this guy who was doing pranks on Vine a few years ago could do anything like that. Like you got to give the guy credit. First of all, he has a ton of money. So he is able to surround himself with incredible trainers, his own gym at home, all that stuff. And when I say gym, I don't mean like an elliptical, like he has like a full boxing gym where he lives. So, you know, he has put in the time and is he beating Canelo, like he talks about at this point, no, he has been very, um, very sort of methodical and smart with who he fights. And obviously someone who is your typical 28 year old boxer isn't getting an opportunity to fight Mike Tyson, but because he is who he is. Um, and honestly, because he doesn't have the same type of experience that your typical 28 year old has. Most people who are 28 in, in boxing don't just have 10 pro fights on their record. They have a hundred amateur fights as well. And they're doing all kinds of stuff for all, you know, like for their, since they were 12, 13, 14, this guy literally just has 10 fights. That's it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think people are a little bit hard on him because, you know, most people who are, you know, 10 and 0, 9 and 1, whatever, are fighting bums. Like they're fighting guys who are like 1 and 12, 2 and 12. Like go look at who, you know, Terrence Crawford or Canelo or, uh, Tyson Fury or anyone you know who's in the top ten right now is fighting at 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 that point in their career. So this is a little bit non traditional, and I will be a thousand percent honest with you guys. Like when I first heard about it, I was like, mm, I'm not so sure. Yeah, but I will say this: the card that they're building. Like if you don't like this fight, that's totally fine. I understand. But the co-main event is a rematch between two of the best female boxers on the planet, arguably, Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano. They fought back in 2022 at Madison Square Garden on April 30th. And it's one of the greatest sporting events that I've ever witnessed live. Like they are pound for pound, two of the best. And that fight was an epic, unbelievable classic. It's the first time two women headlined a fight at MSG. It was historic. Mm -hmm. And they're fighting in the co-main. And that's like a legit hardcore boxing fan fight. And so if you don't like the Tyson Jake thing, like turn it off after that one. They're 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 giving everyone something to be interested in. Whether you're a uh, an old school fan, a current hardcore fan, an influencer boxing fan, even an MMA fan. There's an MMA fighter, a, a former UFC title contender, making his pro boxing debut on it. They they they're really making an eclectic mix, and hopefully it's it's a good um, representation mm. of the sport and how big the sport can be. Um, you mentioned. Something very important, you know, Netflix, um, obviously, as time goes on, things change. So now you, you're getting fights on Netflix, on Hulu, whatever. So I know we grew up in a time where if you want to see Tyson fight, you're going to pay, 50, you know, forty nine ninety nine pay-per-view, WrestleMania, forty nine ninety nine. You got to watch pay-per-view. And now it's like we're getting, we've been getting away from that. But now, if I'm wrong, tell me, this is probably the, the first fight. Of a, of a major sport is going to be on a Netflix, but now they, they're kind of changing the game. Like you said, they're going to get raw in, um, in January. So everything is now streamlined. So yeah. like how big, 
I know Tyson and Jay Paul is going to sell itself, but how big is how big is the fact that it's going to be on Netflix? Gigantic. It's massive. I mean, they're the biggest streaming platform and everyone's been waiting to see if they would get into it. And we're seeing the media landscape evolve right before our eyes. Look at Amazon getting involved more and more. And there are rumors that they're going to get involved in uh, the NBA very soon. Um, look at what MLS did with Apple recently, right? And, uh, you know, look at how much ESPN has put behind ESPN Plus and uh, Premier League on Peacock and WWE on Peacock and DAZN is a streaming platform and they're pretty much the home of boxing right now. So like everything is on streaming. And, and, and so now the biggest dog of them all, Netflix, who continues to evolve from, you know, just being a place where you can like get CDs or DVDs and mm. now it turned into this and now there's shows on there and now there's reality shows and now there's live Tom Brady roasts and all that stuff. And so the next thing was sports. Everyone was just kind of waiting and uh, big events like Will Netflix one day get involved in a in a league, right? Like in an NBA and an NFL? Uh, well, they announced the NFL, but that's like a one off, right? They they're they're not going to do a weekly game. Mm -hmm. um, to me, big fights or what WWE is bringing to the table with them is perfect for them because it's it's something that everyone has. They know where to find it, and you know the promotion could just be incredible. So this seemed like a natural. And I'm as curious as you guys. Like, is this the beginning of Netflix's foray into combat sports? Um, you know, the UFC deal is up next year. Will they go on Netflix? How big would that be? Uh, so it's it's a really interesting thing to follow over the next couple of years. Um, Alex said the Mail newspaper reported that uh, Fury fight loss ninety five mil to illegal streams. Yeah. 1000%. That's the biggest issue right now. Uh, Mayweather Dang. McGregor got killed as far as illegal streams. And uh, it's just too easy. Uh, sadly, it's just too easy. And so, and so the promoters and everyone involved, they have to recognize that. And I think Jake has been hurt a lot by this because Jake Paul, that is his fan base are not, they're not the fans who grew up like us programmed to pay $50 for a pay-per-view. They're programmed to get everything that they want when they want it right now on YouTube, on TikTok, on Instagram, on Snapchat, whatever. They get it right now and they don't pay for it. And so I think this will, this is the direction that Jake should go with his career is to try to put it on a streaming platform, but not behind a two paywalls, right? Mm -hmm. There's the first paywall of the streaming platform. And then there's the second pay-per-view paywall that is what makes the people go out there and find the uh, the illegal streams, and uh, yeah, it's it's on it's on these networks to or these platforms to to try to combat that. But I think this will be huge for Jake because there's no pay per view mm -hmm. price tag attached to it. So my thing is before Denny goes um, goes next, when you put this on Netflix, is it what is more important that the the fact that they have so many millions of, uh, of viewers or the fact that they're not so if it's on pay-per-view you got to pay for it to so the top yeah that's a lot of money but now it's like if it's on netflix and you already got netflix you're more worried about the amount of people that's going to watch and not the amount of people that's going to spend money on it right or am i lost yeah well you know i'm sure some people will sign up but it's also like hey netflix on that july 20th from i don't know what time it starts but let's just say 5 to 10 p.m um everyone's talking about netflix everyone's watching netflix they are mm -hmm. the topic of conversation and then when the event is over what else are they watching what are they sticking around oh wow like that's what's going to be huge about wwe it's great for wwe but it's also great for netflix every monday at nine people are going to or if it stays on monday who knows but you know or at eight people are going to show up and they're using netflix so it's just a way to to get them you know even more um notoriety and and the trickle down effect is huge like what else are they going to stick around for and mm. it's all about you know streams and how many people are watching x amount and for how long watch time is gigantic for them as well so mm -hmm. you know a, a card like this let's say it, it lasts five hours well most movies are two hours uh or an hour and a half or you know what i mean and so now you're having people sit around for five hours mm. on netflix huge for them mm. danny go ahead <clears throat> the money will be raining. Uh, it's yes. in the game podcast. Randy J. Cruz, Denny Blanco. We have special guests, obviously, Ariel Helwani. Uh, before you get out of here, and obviously we want you to do a drop for us, but before you get out of here, um, me and Randy were talking about this. I think we wanted you to, because obviously you, you know, MMA, basketball, uh, boxing, if you will. We wanted Everything. you to pick 
we wanted you to pick uh, one represent representation from each sport as your uh, Mount Rushmore of their rep of, of their sport. So, for example, you hypothetically you did mention Patrick Ewing for yeah. basketball. Seems like that slot's already been taken for basketball. In terms of my favorite, yeah, yes. In terms of yeah. your favorite in that sport, so it seems like Patrick Ewing got the basketball yeah. slot. So let's transition to the other sports. But the next sport, I, obviously, I want to lead lead you uh, drop it here for you for the MMA. So MMA, yeah. who is yep. your who is your so, uh, so Mount Rushmore is four slots, right? Yeah. So I'll give you. We're doing basketball. an extended one. We're doing multiple sports, but you got multiple sports. Yeah. You just got to pick yeah, one. So, pick so one I'm going to give you basketball, yeah. MMA. NFL and uh, pro wrestling. How about awesome. that? Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. So Patrick Ewing is my favorite athlete of all time. And so he goes up there. MMA is George St. Pierre, the former welterweight champion, the pride of Montreal. It's where I'm from. And uh, he's an incredible human being as well. But I, I really do believe he's the greatest. But for me personally, he's my guy. He's up there. Uh, NFL, my favorite player as a kid was Thurman Thomas. The running back for the, Buffalo. Yeah, for the Buffalo Bills. Mm. That was my guy, number 34. And I love the fact that Oakley was the same number. Oakley was like a, a close second to Ewing, but if I had to pick one, Thurman Thomas, 34 for the Buffalo Bills. And as far as pro wrestling is concerned, uh, most people know the excellence of execution. Mr. Bret Hart, mm -hmm. that is my guy. Ooh, the best well, there is, the get, best there was. Canada again. Canada again. The best there ever will be. <laughs> Bret Hart is my first favorite athlete of any kind. Really? Uh, yeah, of any kind. He's like the first guy that I adored. Uh, I, I have vivid memories of being a very young kid. Um, maybe, I don't know, at the time I was seven or eight and I was at the doctor's office and I was getting a shot and I was nervous about it. And I have vivid memories of being in the doctor's office and my mom telling me, close your eyes and think of something that makes you happy. And the thought that came to mind was Bret Hart winning the world championship, being the guy. And he wasn't the guy just yet. He was still tag team Bret Hart. Mm -hmm. And he was kind of- foundation. Yeah, making his run as a singles guy, IC belt. I adored Bret Hart. I still adore Bret Hart. And uh, I, 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 I proudly rep him wherever I go. I have a Roots of Fight Bret Hart jacket that I feel super cool when I wear. So yeah, that's my guy. And uh, that would be my Mount Rushmore. Mm. If, There's a lot of other other people that I, you know, I could put in there. Sure. But like, if I had to pick four, all sure. right. If you got to pick a boxer and a baseball player, who you got? Okay, uh, boxer. I'm going to go with Arturo Gatti, um, the pride of Montreal and Atlantic City as well. I uh, got to see him once in 2000. Uh, may he rest in peace. A lot of other guys that come to mind. I loved Roy Jones as uh, as a kid too. What a legend and. Um, Baseball, I go with Vladimir Guerrero, mm. uh, number twenty-seven. Montreal. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's you know, Canada. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I gotta where, tell you a funny story about Canada too before we get out of here. For sure, uh, this is where I grew up, and I'm talking senior. Obviously, I love junior, mm. but uh, number twenty-seven, the right fielder. What a freaking arm! Uh, he could. He had no like the guy just like would would swing at anything. Like he, he just like the ball would bounce and he would swing at it. So I adored him. And uh, again, others that I adore as well. But if I had to pick one, Vladdy. I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to do it myself. I got, I got Jordan for NBA. Man, I got, you're a Knicks fan. You got Jordan? Shh, 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 that. Shh, yeah. yeah. Jordan wouldn't make my I top 50. I was a Chicago Bulls fan on Yo. 1998. Let me just call up Mr. James Dolan real quick. <laughs> What in the world? I can't, yo, 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 you know we're we're like this is a recording. Right? Right? Bro. But for the record, I've been a Knicks you walk fan. around the garden. I see everyone showing you love. Do they know about this? They do. Come do, come do yeah. What do you have under there? A Ron Harper and Dennis Rodman <laughs> shirt. Get yeah, him, right I got him right here. I got him right here. You know what I mean? I got uh, him right here. Yeah. I yeah, you it. probably have a Rick Brunson Bulls jersey too. <laughs> Get him, Elwani. Yeah. Come on! Man. I've been a Knicks fan longer. You, so in '98, so you were fan. cheering for the you were cheering for the Bulls. Yes, against the Knicks in the '90s. Yes. Oh, <laughs> this is, I was. I feel like they just told me Santa, the Easter Bunny. They're all not real. But Ariel, don't you, I've been a Knicks fan for 25 years now. 1999 when I started. Yeah, bro, but what about the 90s? They killed us I in the wasn't 90s. A, bro, Michael Jordan. That was the answer. Michael Jordan. <laughs> no, <laughs> that wasn't the answer. The answer was John Starks. The answer was... Look what happened oh. to him. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to him? 
So I got Jordan. Oh, this hurts. I got, I got 1992 when we went seven <laughs> games against the Bulls, led by the X-Men, who I wish would have stayed a little bit longer, Xavier mm-hmm. McDaniel. I was bawling my eyes out. Mm-hmm. Like the, These are scars mm-hmm. that I have. They had Ooh. no when, answer for 23. No yeah, answer. no kidding. No kidding. I lived it. <laughs> by the way, when he came back to the Garden as 45 and dropped the double nickel, that final play – where he he passed it off to freaking Bill That's Wennington right. of Montreal. Mm-hmm. That broke my heart too. <laughs> that broke my heart too. These are scars that will never heal. Um so I got Jordan. I got a I got a one A one B for football and baseball. I got Tom Brady and Randy Moss. Oh God. I, got... I hate your list. I hate your list. <laughs> Patriots? You're a Patriots fan? No, Tom Brady. Tom Brady fan. He's a Tom Brady. Brady. Bro, and, how and can Randy you be Moore. a New Yorker and like Tom Brady? Are you from New York? Yes, I am. Born Where are you from? I'm born and raised, man. Uh, up east side suspect. of the house. I need to see that birth certificate. Um, Show me the birth certificate. <laughs> baseball, I got Ken Griffey and A Rod. I'm surprised you didn't pick, like, I don't know, uh, Pedro Martinez or someone. Uh, he, he was next. He was next. Uh. <laughs> he was third. He was third. <laughs> uh, boxer Mike Tyson and uh, pro wrestler would be Stone Cold and MMA. I probably go with uh, McGregor. Mm-hmm. Go with Connor. Mm-hmm. How, how how big is him coming back for the sport? Uh, Gigantic uh, man! It's already the biggest gate ever, over twenty million dollars. Um, and that's the gate. If for those that don't know, like the gate is the the revenue from ticket sales and whatnot. And the UFC has never done over twenty for an event, and the event is still a little over a month away. Wow. Uh, so the pay per views are going to be nuts. The ticket sales will be nuts. It will be sold out, and he is the face of the UFC. Still, and uh, he hasn't fought in three years. Uh, it'll be three years in July. And uh, he's the biggest star in the history of the sport. He transformed the sport. And uh, I would also strongly argue that he's the most underpaid fighter in the history of the sport. Mm. He is so much more than what he makes. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's a different discussion. Mm. Right, you know you know who I like to, uh, Ariel? Um, like, I know she won't. It's a different time for her now. But Ronda Rousey. And UFC yeah. was like I was watching every fight, every fight. I know it's a different place now, but her in that time frame being the most dominant star in the sport was a, a wild time. Oh yeah, it was. Tra- I mean, I, I I remember going. Uh, I covered all of her fights in the UFC, and um, towards the end of her run, she fought in Brazil in Rio against Bech Cohea, UFC 190, and it was like. It was like covering the Beatles, it felt like. Like I, I saw the girls screaming, crying just to take a picture with her or to be next to her. Like she women's MMA would be nowhere near where it is today without her. So she's she's a pioneer, no doubt. Mm. I don't know how many Denny has left, but I got no, two. Just, Go ahead. No, I mean just before we before we drop get the drop and we get out of here. Um obviously for full disclosure, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh basketball, Jordan. Uh, a, a, a football um, is going to be uh, Deion Sanders. Um, okay. Baseball is going to be uh, <clears throat> Barry Bond. No, sidetrack. Ken Griffey Jr. Sorry. Okay. And like uh, yeah, Ken Griffey Jr. And, uh, you know, MMA, I'm not really into, so I can't really pick a person in MMA. I'm not you. Know, so I, okay. I'll, I'll keep that, keep that off, the, off the shelf. So but other than that, Randy, go ahead. Got to pick a boxer. Boxer. The one, the only, Iron Mike Tyson. Yeah. Mike Tyson. Your man was beating me up in, in Mike Tyson punch out. No one knew how to beat the man. I mean, <laughs> he was incredible. Nice. Well, what about what about pro wrestling? Mm. Oh, I apologize. Pro wrestling. Um, I was on the fence with these two gentlemen because of the uh, because of the love for them. I was on the fence between Ric Flair and The Rock. On mm. the fence. Uh, don't get me wrong. Stone Cold. Uh, Bret Hart, uh, the excellence execution. I love all of that, but no Shawn Michaels, about, no Shawn Michaels, sh- no, no Shawn Michaels, no, no, no. Compared oh, yeah. to Ric Flair and The Rock, these two guys just for me transcended the 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 art of wrestling where it was, and 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 just them being trailblazers and and just running with their particular uh craft. It just those two, but yeah, probably mm. The Rock more than Ric Flair. Mm. Okay, not Fair bad. Enough. Uh, Ariel, I got two more. Um, no problem. He, uh, real quick, he mentioned The Rock. Uh, obviously, Cody Rhodes is the world champion now. Roman Reigns is doing some movies. He'll be out for quite some time. Just want to know 
how you've been taking Cody as a new champion. Have you been following every every week as much as Roman Reigns being their champion? And do you miss Roman Reigns right now? No, I think it's a breath of fresh air. Uh, obviously, Mania was incredible. What a what a conclusion that was. Uh, I will be honest. Like I'm, I don't watch. You know, I don't sit there and watch all three hours of Raw yeah. or SmackDown. I'm I'm kind of a fan who will watch like the big shows. Like I I, I watched Backlash. Uh, that was incredible in France. Yeah. But as far as like the the weekly shows, I kind of just follow it online. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's a few accounts that just are doing like running commentary and okay, cool. See some videos and that's that. And I bet a lot of people my age do that as well. And that's no indictment on the product, but it's just like, it's a lot, right? It's a lot to watch, especially with uh, kids and everything like that. But uh, love Cody, love the story. So happy they did it. Was critical of them not doing it last year in LA was critical of them not doing it in Montreal with Sami Zayn and et cetera, et cetera. And um, in Wales with Drew McIntyre, but this was great. They nailed it. And I think distance makes a heart grow fonder. And I think Roman taking a break and coming back in a big way, maybe, you know, later on this year, SummerSlam, Royal Rumble, whatever, I think that would be huge. Um, so this has been great. The, the product is on fire. Mm-hmm. Like, what a time, what a time for combat sports. And I always include wrestling in there. Yes. It's obviously different. Yes. But like if you're a boxing fan, mm-hmm. Boxing is on fire right now. Yes. If you're an MMA fan, yeah. on fire right now. Pro wrestling on fire. Like we, there, there have been some dark days where there wasn't a lot to be excited about. Not now. So I hope the fans are appreciating that. Uh, do you watch the MMA Guru, Ariel? What is that? I don't know. I just all right. Well, doesn't look like right. you don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like. Listen, you. Uh, um, wait, 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 hold up, hold up. Oh. I got it. I got it. I, I had two in my head. You kind of. Oh, you messed me up. You messed me up. I threw oh. you off. No, 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 that no, threw no, you no. off. Okay, no, I got it. So, if you had the pen, if you're Triple H, we know WrestleMania 41 is in Vegas next year. Who do you have in the main event? Rock and Roman or Cody and The Rock? What do you do? Rock Roman. Vegas 41 WrestleMania. I know you'll be there. <sighs> I, I, I wonder. It's really tough. I mean, what what an option. Um, you have the pen, Thanos. You yeah. have the snap. Your triple H. Oh, yeah. Come on, come on. I, what's bigger? I don't know. What do you think is bigger? I think Cody Rock is bigger. No, Rock and Roman is bigger. All right, there it Rock goes. All right, yeah, you yeah, go. you're right. And then who does Cody go up against? Punk or something? And Punk. Yeah, I that's think pretty Punk freaking big. The Rumble. Give me that. I hope. Yeah, I hope he's good. I'll, I'll take that. No problem. And there it is, Ariel. Oh, no, 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 hold up, hold up. Damn, oh, no, no, I, th- I thought you was okay. Good. okay. This, this is it. Then the drop. Trust me, Ariel <laughs> Aria will appreciate that. Two. Now this three. Go ahead. Um, real quick, I heard the podcast you did. I think a year ago with Bob Costas had a great conversation about oh, NBA thanks. on um, NBC in that time frame. Ariel, we are on the probably on the verge of NBA going back to NBC. You mentioned yeah. Peacock and Amazon. They might lose out on the uh, TNT. Might lose out on the NBA if this does happen. Obviously, Bob may not do it. Marv Albert may not do it. It's a, it'll be a di- it'll be different. But what do you what do you look forward to seeing the NBA back on NBC if it does happen? But them losing TNT in the process. Well, the first thing I look forward to is that song coming back to its rightful home. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's in freaking betting ads. It's on college basketball on Fox. Like I want that song. You know the one I'm talking of about. Course, Da-na-na. And I, I want the old school intro, and I, I and I'm guessing they'll revamp it. But like, you give me that exact. That's that's my childhood right there. NBA on NBC on a Sunday afternoon. Bob Costas hosting the Prudential halftime report. Marv Albert, the czar of the telestrator. Mike Fratello and Hannah yeah. Storm. And <laughs> Hannah Storm, bring back a mod. Mm. Give me inside stuff again. Like I want the whole crew back, and I know it can't be just that. And uh, time goes on, but uh, I think this is great. Can I? Can I? Can I throw something out there? Sure, go ahead. Can I throw something out there? Yeah, this might be a bit of a hot take. I don't know, and and maybe this is coming from you know bitter Knicks fan perspective. Inside the NBA, greatest studio show of all time, of all time in any sport, greatest studio show of all time. Must see TV. There are times that I have tuned in to broadcast just to watch them Mm -hmm. and said, I don't really care about this game and I'll come back for the post game or I'll watch it on YouTube or I'll watch halftime. And they have been the voice of the NBA for some of the most important moments in, in, in our lifetime. So I say all that to say this, are they losing their fastball? 
Are they losing their fastball? Because this this current iteration where you're bringing Draymond and you're you're doing you're celebrating when the Knicks are like, I'm good, I'm good. So you think they're losing some some? It's a lot. It's it's just like you're above that. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're like trying to troll Knicks fans. It's bizarre. Like I'm not I'm not here. And by the way, I'm the first to say like if I'm a Pacer fan Mm -hmm. and I watch that broadcast on Sunday and Stephen A is like openly rooting for the Knicks and that turns me off too. I get that. When Reggie was calling that game and was clearly rooting for the Pacers, that was annoying to me. I am of the of the era of when you watch a broadcast in the 90s, I'm not I'm not watching for fandom. I'm watching for broadcasting. Yes. Deep down inside, we all know Mike Breen probably wants the Knicks to win. But you watch that, you can't tell me he's rooting for them. He calls it down the middle. That's a pro, right? And so I don't want to see fan. I don't want to see people going, oh my God. I don't want to see people laughing at the Knicks or cheering for the Knicks, to be honest. I'll, I'll, I'll get that on MSG. I'll get, I know where I'm, but like when it's a national broadcast, I, I don't think there should be that type of commentary. The Draymond stuff is embarrassing at this point. It's embarrassing. And, and, and everyone's feeding into it by reposting it, but it is embarrassing. And... Um, yeah. I you know I hope when NBC and Amazon get involved if they do that they go down a different path because I don't want to see that type of stuff when I'm watching a national broadcast. Hmm. Denny Blanco would take it away. Let's do it. <laughs> Ariel, you need to come back. Yes, <laughs> please. First and foremost, you have to understand what you just said was exactly on point from how I've been feeling. It's called basketball over narratives here at it's in the game podcast we want to learn about the game we want to know why someone takes a drop step we want to know why someone cuts into the paint we want to know why someone goes 0 for 3 0 for 6 from the field these are the things we want to know when you bring up mike mike fratello the telestrator that was probably one of my favorite parts where he actually yeah. broke down plays and why things didn't work. I was like, oh, my goodness. So thank you for mentioning that. Now, before you do the drop, Aerial Friends Live and JPAC, right? Oh, yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, Come yeah, on yeah. now. We, we here, baby. We all here. right. All right. I appreciate that, my man. Um, May 31st, the night before UFC 302 in Newark. So UFC 302 is in uh, Newark at the Prudential Center. And JPAC. And JPAC yep. is yep. a great venue right next to the Prudential Center. There I'm doing is. a live show. Tickets on sale now. There's going to be surprise uh, fighters joining me. I've done five of these before. It's a great time. Meet and greet giveaways. But what's cool about this particular one is that there's a fighter named Dustin Poirier who's beloved, mm-hmm. who's been in the game for a long time. Yeah. And for the last several years, he has had a uh, charity called the Good Fight Foundation where when he fights, he'll usually uh, donate his gloves or his gear to this charity, put it up for auction. He and his wife have started the charity and the mm-hmm. um, vast majority of, 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 of their efforts go to uh, Lafayette, Louisiana, which is where he's from. Uh, so like they'll do a back to school drive, they'll build a playground for a school, et cetera, et cetera, all great things. And so he's fighting for the belt in what will most likely be his last chance to become a UFC champion. He's had two other times before, and he has uh, unfortunately not gotten over the hump. Uh, all proceeds of all ticket sales are going to that charity. Um, I've always admired uh, what he and his wife have done. And uh, because he will sort of be the theme of the weekend and I've never really had a great way to contribute to what he's done. Um, I wanted to do this live show because I love interacting with the fans and doing this sort of thing, but I wanted to to give back to his charity as well. So if you're buying a ticket, it's all, I'm not making anything off of it. Um, it's all going to them. And I hope as many people out there, if they're in the tri-state area looking for something to do on Friday, May 31st, it was actually going to go up against, I think, uh, game five of the Eastern Conference Finals, and I was worried mm. about that. But now, now I'm glad that uh, <laughs> awesome. I won't have to watch that. Awesome. So obviously, Randy will close it out, if you will, please. Ariel, the professional, please. Can you give us a drop? Yes, and uh, you know, I, I just want to make sure I get it right. So it's in the game podcast. It's Randy J. Cruz. It's Denny Blanco. There you go. There you go. And is there anything else that I need to say? I'm here yeah. rocking with It's in the Game podcast with Randy J. Cruz and okay. Danny Blanco. All right, all right. You're the pro, man. You're the pro at this. What's going on, everyone? Ariel Helwani here, a.k.a. El Nariz, a.k.a. Helwani Knows, a.k.a. Thug Knows, a.k.a. Helwani, a.k.a. Mr. 10-7, and I'm here hanging out with the It's in the Game podcast, boys. Of course, we got Randy J. Cruz, my guy, 
who I found out is not a long-suffering Knicks fan today, and I still don't know what to make of all that, but he's a great guy who's a Knicks fan right now, and that's all that matters, and Mr. Denny Blanco as well, who is here holding it down each and every episode. Tremendous show. It's an honor. As always, check him out wherever you get your podcasts. Boom! Oh, Randy! Another, another one take. Another one take. Uh -huh. Boom! Randy! Talk to me! My last question, Ariel. Is that bookcase real or is it banner? What do you think? I think, <laughs> I think it's fake, bro. <laughs> I think it's a banner. What do you think, Denny? There's a lot of books there. I mean, Ariel, you're 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 professional. I, I think it's it's real. You, you don't you, <laughs> thank you for that. You don't think I can read these books? You don't <laughs> think no, it's real. No, 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 Ari, you know you know what's giving it away? That light yeah. you're using. And yeah. I can tell it's like, nah, it's it's, it's yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, that's just because it reflects. Uh, funny story, I've had this. This is a this is a screen, as you can see. It's a TV. Um, there's a uh, there's a uh, like a, a screensaver on it. Yeah. And when I was at ESPN, if it's on for more than two hours, it will just turn to black with like a little Samsung thing bouncing around. Yeah. And I was live on SportsCenter, and I forgot to refresh it, and it turned to black. So that's when I was outed. Oh, man. Well, listen, man, Ariel. Listen, we we love you, man. We appreciate you for doing this over over an hour. Over thirty six hundred people tapped in. Um, you're doing an amazing job. Keep up the great work. I know we'll catch up soon. Let's go next for next year. And uh, right. we're big fans. I know we'll have you on again soon, man. Thank you very much. Same thank here. you. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I appreciate it. And one more time, thank you for what you did for me and my kids a few weeks ago, Randy. I really appreciate it and won't forget it. No problem, man. Anytime, man. Next year, we're going to do it again next year. Trust me. Can't wait. Can't right, wait. Man, take it easy. Take care. It's in the game. You heard? That's right.